when we went through special relativity we basically have seen how we can describe uh, uh, events such as uh, anything that is happening at a certain position at a certain time to which we can also associate particles we include uh, uh, additional properties such as mass uh, charge and so on and so forth we have seen how we can uh, have a description of this sort of objects by constructing a vector space with a matrix therefore a matrix space uh, a matrix space therefore it might be uh, useful if i am going through uh, basic uh, concepts of linear algebra that are related to what we are doing i'm sure that you already know everything about linear algebra but perhaps it's good if we just um, recollect uh, what are the, the, um, the main concepts that we need during these lectures okay so let's see linear algebra essentials okay so i'm not going to i mean linear algebra there are full lectures about that now i'm just going to give you some essentials that you need to know therefore this is going to be incomplete okay so i'm just giving to you the basics so let's start with one of the simplest objects that we have in linear algebra which are vectors and we can for instance define a vector that belongs to a space with size m a vector is something like this it has a direction and it has a modulus okay these are the intrinsic properties of a vector and as such as i described it now it does have not any components it has no components okay because their intri it is its intrinsic property is just length and direction this is a vector then if we introduce a basis set such as for example a generic basis bi which might be just some linear independent uh, uh, vector that belongs to the space rm <coughs> sorry or a, or this m dimensional vector space we can now express the vector which now this is expressed in a frame independent way <coughs> sorry we can express it in a frame dependent way by introducing a basis set such that now the vector is given by the linear combination of uh, the basis set that we have chosen okay so you see the difference frame independent representation of the vector so it represents the vector in itself the concept of the vector in itself whereas here we express the vector in terms of a basis set so now you see that here there is an interplay when we use this sort of construction we use, there is an interplay between the, the the coefficients of the vector and the basis therefore the vector in itself it exists and is like that then i can choose a basis set then can be arbitrary i just need three linearly independent vectors they can be orthogonal or not it doesn't matter they just have to be independent and on that i construct the the coefficients of the vector that i can just compute like this okay good and if you wish we can define this uh, scalar product that i'm doing here as a linear mapping then i'm coming back to to linear mapping again so with i is not a coefficient of the basis but is the ith basis of the set okay so you can see that i can if i write it like this what i did i just put two commas here okay but we, if i express it like this i'm basically saying that this uh, uh, vector v can be used as a linear mapping of the basis b so it's like i'm sending it's like a map that goes from rm to a real number and in fact this is going to give us uh, a coefficient of the uh, of the um, uh, of the vector which is a real number is not a vector so it's a mapping that goes from rm to r okay then we have if we grow a little bit in complexity we have a matrix a matrix which is for example a squared matrix r m times r m and i'm using a square matrix because for example the lorentz transformations are captured by a square matrix and we are going to meet other kind of matrices and they are going 
or basically to be squared. So I'm just restricting myself to this case. Now, if we can, this is again S, so it describes the concept of the matrix itself, so it's the object in itself. I can now introduce a basis set. Let's take, for example, E1, E2. So this is going to be 1, 0, and this is going to be 0, 1, so the standard orthonormal uh, set. And the coefficients, I can now write the, my matrix S as S11, S12, S21, S22, S2, where Sij is equal to E, I, S, E, J. So what you see that I did uh, to find the coefficients, I did something very similar to what I did before, in which I basically projected, so to say, my matrix over the two basis sets that describes my uh, my vector space okay before it was the projection only based on one uh, component on, only on one of uh, uh, only on the basis of, of that vector space good then what we i can introduce are linear mappings which i already mentioned that, for example, again, this is an example, also this was an example. It's some function, if you wish, that it's operating over vectors. So it's a function that is working. It has as an input a vector of size m, and it's going, for example, to another vector of size m. This is a linear mapping. And in general, I can write it as tv. So this is the vector that it's uh, working, operating on, which I can also write as well as Tv, or with the Einstein notation that we introduced, I can write in as Tijvi. In fact, this is what? This is a matrix times a vector. You have a matrix vector product that you can write like this. You can see the row times line uh, um, uh, multiplication in these repeated indices i. Okay, this is, I'm running over the row of the column vector v. Okay, good. And so this is going to give me another vector, which is uh, uh, w. Okay, and uh, uh, just to be complete, uh, these are the two vectors living in Rm that I worked on. If I want to have a graphical representation of this operation, it's basically my linear mapping t that it's working on a column vector v to give me a color vector w okay and of course the matrix is m times m okay so this is my linear mapping why linear because it has uh, obey certain uh, uh, properties and uh, I just mentioned the two, two of them. It has other properties, but this, I want to stress these two ones. So if we are giving, so V times W is a vector. This is volume vectors, and therefore I can apply T to the sum of two vectors, because the sum of two vectors is a vector in itself. Okay? And if we do that, it has the property that TV is equal to T w okay and it's called distributive 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 uh, property okay then the other very important uh, um, uh, feature that uh, linear mapping has is that they are linear because if i multiply if i give to uh, my uh, linear mapping expressed by t a vector which is multiplied by a scalar then the A is coming outside the operation of V, and I have this result. So it's linear. Okay? And here I use the A is a real number. Okay? Good. Now let's give a look at something else, which are bilinear li mappings. Okay, and in this case, it's a, um, a, a slight generalization of what uh, we have before, 
where before the, the mapping was following only one vector Rm, now it's following two of them. And therefore, for example, again I give um, an example, um, uh, a very simple example in, in which I have a bilinear mapping, I again call it T, but now the meaning is going to be different because the definition that I'm giving you here is different, is Rm cross Rm that is going to Rm. It could be going to a real or whatever, okay? It depends how you construct it, but in this case is an example. I'm swallowing one, two vectors, and it's spitting out one other, another vector, okay? Therefore, if I just write as I did before, uh, I have that T is swallowing two vectors, you see, with respect to the previous one, now I have two inputs, so it's a function that is following two inputs. And uh, I can write it T i j v i w j, okay, with uh, the uh, Einstein, with the Einstein. Uh, sorry, now this is going actually to a to a real number. Okay, so I send it to a real number because uh, you see there is summations over i, summation over j. Therefore, this is going to give me a, a real number that belongs to L. Okay, so again, if I want to give a graphical representation of this object, you may imagine your T and then you have your two inputs, which is going to give you the scala if you want to have a, a matrix representation. Again, it has uh, the uh, similar properties of what we have before. But in this, ca in this case, it's distributed in its linear with respect to its inputs, okay? So it's linear with respect to V and W, and it's linear with respect to uh, distributive with respect to the first and the second input as well. Just to write it down, let's write down the equation. So if I have, for example, V plus S and the other vector, you see it's very similar to what I did before, and I used the, the sum here on this uh, first uh, input, then the uh, distributive uh, um, properties are acting on the first input, and therefore this is going to be T V W plus T S W. Also here it, it has distributive properties. Same linearity applies, so we have T A V uh, B W it's equal to a b v w okay so it's linear in uh, in the in the components as well in the input as well very good so much about uh, linear mappings now let's give a look at the scalar product we have see how important it is in in especially relativity and in the construction of the of uh, the minkowski space And uh, we've seen that usually you can write it like this, which kind of hiding the matrix, so it's a bit nicer to write it like this because you see it's a special operation that is hiding the matrix of uh, the matrix space uh, to which the vector V and W belong, belong to. And uh, it's uh, uh, a bilinear mapping, now you see, that it's uh, uh, crea uh, throwing the result into a real number. So we have V and W belonging to Rm and A that is a, a real number, okay? And if you forget about the fact that there is a, a metric uh, uh, implied when you, whenever you have a scalar product, you can just say, ah, okay, so it's a row times column product that gives me the A. Mm, not really. Not really. Okay? Because there is also the metric that is playing a role there. Here, when you was doing this, uh, uh, when you're doing that, you are already assuming that there is a metric with the set describing the metric space which is orthonormal. So it is the standard set of basics 1, 0, 0, 0, 
0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on and so forth, okay? Then the metric is basically the identity matrix as in not playing a role. It, it doesn't manifest itself and you can simply do like that, okay? But this is not always the case, as we've seen, for example, in the, in the, in the Minkowski space. Good. So let's, uh, uh, so as I said, basically you have uh, these sort of things if uh, you have an orthonormal set, such as the standard basis EI, where for example E2, okay, is equal to 0, 1, 0, transpose because this is a, a vector column, okay, so it has 1 in the second entry. If you do that, then yes, it's like that, but not in general. Good. Therefore, we need uh, to, uh, when we, when we, whenever we have a scalar product, we need to remember that there is the metric uh, playing a role there. And the metric is, if we use the E, then it's going to be composed by the basis set that we created. It is a vector, a, a, a column vector that we can displace like this to create the matrix, the matrix, and in the previous example was zero everywhere except then along the diagonal, which is equal to the identity matrix of m uh, dimensions. Okay, good. M more in general, when we have this color product V W, as I said, we have V W. To remind ourselves that there is the, the metric hidden into it and now what we have is g i j v i and uh, w j again einstein summation and here we can recognize the scalar product that uh, i've shown you uh, when we uh, introduced the, um, uh, the the minkowski space if we want to give a representation of this object and to have a graphical impression, we have this sort of product. This is the metric. This is our uh, <coughs> our vector. When we make the multiplication, so we apply the metric to our elements, we are going to obtain the objects that we are kind of used to. Okay, this vector times a row product. Therefore, the metric is kind of transforming one or the other. It depends. You can you can change one or the other. But it's anyway going to transform one of these uh, vectors from a column vector to a row vector. Reshuffled, okay? So the uh, coefficients are going to be the same if this, if this matrix, uh, matrix is diagonal. If it's not diagonal, then the coefficients of this row vector are going to be different than this one, okay? So in general, the coefficients of this vector are not like the one of this one. So keep in mind that when you make the change from a row vector to a, to a column vector to a row vector, the coefficients may change according to the specific metric that you are using. So keep this in mind, it's very important, okay? Good. Now, as I said, so if we go back to uh, special relativity and what uh, you have seen, we kind of now uh, use for our metric, not anymore this uh, metric, with, which is uh, uh, basically a diagonal, but is uh, the, um, the Minkowski metric, nu alpha beta, which is equal to diag minus one, 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 one. So it's similar to this one, which is represents a flat space, but for the time component, we have the minus. And there is this minus for the reason that, uh, I have, uh, that you have seen during the other lectures, okay? Uh, sorry, my metric. Very good, okay? Fantastic. So, let's move on and let's uh, uh, have some more thoughts about this uh, um, scalar product because it's, it's really a key concept so I want to stress uh, all details about it and uh, uh, let's start to think of this uh, scalar product uh, as a bilinear mapping OK, 
Okay. Good. So we take again our V and W vectors belonging to our metric space, whatever it is. We have our scalar product that we let act on these two um, on these two vectors, and I define it as G V W. Okay, so you see I'm using the metric that I had before. So remember that I'm, this was an example, the Minkowski metric. Okay, now forget about it and just go back to the very generic case. Uh, where actually this is again very specific, but just imagine that is a, a matrix that could be non-diagonal or whatever, so completely general. We are just, uh, uh, it, it is working in this way over the two vectors. That's what we did before, right? So G, I, J, V, I, W, J. And you see that it's a bilinear uh, application. So it's a mapping that it's working on two vectors. So you can think of it as a bilinear mapping. Okay, very good. I'm going slow here because there is a key point that is, that is, that is coming. Now, what we can do is to express this uh, scalar product as a linear mapping. Okay, so what we do now is to define an object. So we have G, V and some vector as an input. We define it a V tilde bar. Okay, so what am I doing now? I'm saying, okay, the metric to which this vector are working on is the same for all of them. And what I can do is to define these guys as an uh, uh, object in itself. So I'm kind of already applying this matrix times column multi multiplication. So that I, such that I have this object that now I call the W and I call it like this. You see, now these two guys are working already together and there is only one slot left free. And I can say, okay, V tilde is just, are these two elements together and I just plug, can plug in another vector. So now you see this is a linear mapping. Okay, I can express as well the, uh, uh, this is a scalar product through a linear mapping. So if I take, if I continue from here, you can see yes. Then what I can do, I can call this guy here, associated to this, uh, um, to this uh, um, new linear mapping V tilde. You see that there is I and I are working together. I'm left only within, only with an index which is J and is below. And I therefore I just write it as Vj below Wj. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what's happening again. I repeat it. I'm let the metric work on this vector, and I obtain a new element which is given by this linear mapping. Okay, and therefore I can re-express the. Uh, scalar product between these two vectors in this way, where I have one index up for the column vector and the vj for the row vector. Okay, so you see that the uh, metric is transforming columns with the vectors with the indices up to vectors with the indices down. And uh, it's not that I'm just uh, changing the index, also the values change according to the kind of metric that I have because I'm actually letting this uh, matrix times vector multiplication act on the vector itself. Okay, so take care of this. Good. And uh, if uh, you see, this is the, the, the um, frame dependent representation because I am expressing this color product through uh, um, uh, the, co the, the, the coefficients, but I can as well work it, uh, write it as a frame independent representation where I'm hiding the um, the uh, coefficients as we did here. For example, this is a frame independent representation. You just say you have the scalar product without two uh, vectors, without showing the, the coefficients themselves. And to do that, I just do like this. This is the vector which is standing. And to, and to just let know to the people that this is actually a row vector with the indices below, I can do like this. 
okay several time, times you can find also like that okay it's like a vector but with a star it's a label to remember that this step happened okay so just to be super clear about that these are going to be column vectors this is going to be a row vector and then there are many names to call this, uh, this object they are also called one forms they are also so this is one form so one of these is one form and then you can have more one forms and then it's plural then it can also called dual vectors that you can find in that oof, sorry and that people write them in different ways with this star or with the tilde or uh, contravariant vectors okay so this is very important this is this is very 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 important okay add this uh, uh, contravariant vector this uh, one form so wh whatever you want to call it is row vectors they belong to their own vector space and they actually belong so v twiggle basically belong to the dual space of R M. So V belong to R M and V tilde you say when it's kind of a row vector uh, belongs to the dual space of R M. Okay? And for example, the dual space of uh, the Minkowski space, you do it like this. You include the star. Okay, so this is the dual of the Minkowski space. Okay, very good. That's about the basic of of, uh, of uh, linear algebra that you need to know. And this step here is, is very important. Okay, so give a look at this uh, uh, several times to be uh, fluent with that.